Welcome to part two of the sew along for the S9620. We are gonna start off by sewing the side front, but before we get into that, let me just walk you through what you should have ready for sewing the sports bralette. In video three, we will sew the biker short and the legging, so you don't need anything for that. Um, just the sports bralette in this video. So I cut out all the pieces in the last video, but two things that you should have is either a fold over elastic or a rubber elastic. I'm gonna show you two different applications for um, using them. And then I have a band elastic. You can either sew a band elastic at the bottom of the sports bralette or you can create a casing and then apply a knitted elastic inside or encase a knitted elastic inside. So let's get sewing. By the way, all these supplies are available on Madeline.com. Um, so you can purchase the kit as well as the supply separately. So if you run out, you can always buy, purchase by the yard. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do, super easy. I always like starting off with an easy step to, um, to not overwhelm you. Um, and please note that I am making two, um, I'm making two. So you will probably see that I have four cut out. That's because I wanna show you two different applications for this. So I cut out two different sports bralettes. Um, but you should only have two cut out. So we're just gonna sew um, the bust starts really easy. We're gonna do a straight stitch and you might be thinking, wait a second. Uh, we should be using zigzag stitches on uh, stretch fabrics. Generally speaking, this is not always the case, but you can use straight stitches on vertical seams. Zigzag stitches has to be on horizontal seams because it, you usually stretch horizontally, not vertically. Unless you're doing jumping jacks all day long. I don't know. So, we can use a straight stitch here. Um, so I'm marking my dart legs, and then I'll mark my dart point, and then I'm gonna sew a straight stitch. Um, I'm gonna back just at the beginning, and then I'm gonna sew off the end. Um, you can also back stitch. I know people tell you that it's bad to back stitch on a dart, but you can either sew off of it, tie it in a knot three times, or you can back stitch. Whatever you wanna do, you do you, boo. Um, so yeah. Okay, so I sewed the bust darts on the side front piece. A uh, question that I get a lot in lingerie and activewear is can you press or iron uh, your lingerie activewear fabrics? Totally, you definitely can. You just wanna make sure that you use um, an iron on a synthetic setting. Steam is your friend. Uh, so I pressed this um, and then just because of the nature of the fabric, there's always gonna be a little bit of a bubble. This isn't like a quilting cotton where it'll go away, but once you wear it, it'll be fine. So the next step is we are gonna attach these to the side back, which is piece number four. So again, we're gonna use straight stitch, back stitch at beginning and the end, and then I'm going to off camera, I'm gonna serge this as well. Um, if you don't have a serger, that's totally fine. You do not need a serger. You can either just press it open and leave the edges raw. These fabrics don't fray, or you can press the seam allowances to one side um, and then top stitch it down with a zigzag stitch. Okay, so I sewed the side front to the side back. I uh, pressed the seam open and then I serge both sides. Something I wanna call out is I used a standard stretch length, or I used a standard stitch length, which will vary from machine to machine. So whatever your standard is on your machine, that's what I use. Um, I use a polyester thread. Uh, Mara 120, Guterman's Mara 120 is what I, my, Number one choice, never had an issue with thread breaking. You can use a stretch uh, thread if you want, 
but that is up to you. Um, I know some people have some success, but our Mara 120 works great, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, what else did I want to point out? I think that's it. Okay, so next up is we are going to be applying either fold over elastic or rubber elastic on either side or on the top edge of the side front and the side back. Um, da, da, da. So for both of them, um, I changed my mind since the uh, previous clip. Um, I was gonna do a hot pink, which I showed you in your supplies, but I was like, oh, I'm actually gonna do a black. So change my mind. Um, so I like to show these different applications because with the fold over elastic and with the rubber elastic for two reasons. I think it's good to know different types of applications, but one is you might not find a elastic to go with your fabric and you might be like, oh geez, but I really don't want to use a photo of it. It's not going to match. It's going to look terrible. So I want to show you how to apply it with rubber elastic in case you don't want anything. You want more of a clean finish. Both of these are sewn in the same, it's sewn in two steps. Both use zigzag stitches, both use the same stitch. Um, so just want to point that out. So I'm gonna first demonstrate doing it on the fold over elastic, and then I'll demonstrate on doing it on the um, rubber elastic. So I sewed the fold over elastic um, along the uh, side front and side back, the top edge. I use a zigzag stitch. And if you saw in the video, I gave it a little bit of tension when sewing it. The act of sewing elastic, fold over elastic especially, um, stretches out the elastic. So I'm just adding a little bit of tension to compensate for that. It will depend on what type of fabric that you're using, and I know a lot of sewists like to use some sort of calculation. Can I measure this length and then um, cut the elastic shorter by 10 by 10 percent? I don't like using math because I think it's more of an intuitive feel, um, knowing what fabric that you're using, um, what type of elastic that you're using. So I know it takes a little bit of time to develop that intuitive sense of how much to stretch elastic, but I promise that with um, sewing it more and more, you will get the hang of it. So as you can see here, it's zigzag stitch. Your zigzag stitch width and length is going to vary from machine to machine. Even on the FAF machines that we use here at the studio, the zigzag stitches vary, the settings at least. So I cannot tell you what settings to use because it's going to differ on your machine. A good rule of thumb or something that helped me out when I first started sewing is to look at some zigzag stitches on some of my ready-mates and compare it to um, the stitches that I was sewing. Um, and then you'll develop, you know, your own settings that you will just go back to over and over again. Um, one, uh, let's see, where are my scissors? I use for the fold over elastic, I sometimes use uh, duck build scissors. Um, they come in handy a lot. Ha, ah, here they are. So duck build scissors are a great tool for lingerie, for activewear, and that they allow you to cut your stitches really close to the stitch line. Um, so I'm just doing that on my fold over elastic where it goes past the indentation. Okay, so for both of them, the next step is I'm gonna fold the fold over elastic to the right side. I'm going to use the same zigzag uh, stitch to sew it down. Um, th something that I didn't mention is that when sewing fold over elastic, if you have a matte side and a shiny side, the matte side technically is the wrong side. It should be on the inside. The shiny side should be on the outside. So when I'm folding it over, I'm folding it over so the shiny side is on the outside. When I'm sewing the rubber elastic, doesn't really matter. Um, when you fold it over, that rubber elastic is gonna be encased. Okay, 
so now that we have assembled the side front and side back, let's move on to assembling the front and back pieces. So I'm gonna sew the front to the back at the shoulder seam using a straight stitch, back stitching at the beginning and the end, and that's it. So you're gonna do this for the main fabric and then for the lining fabric. Not for the lining, but there should be two cut to each. So this is one set, there should be another set. Okay, so I've sewn the front to the back. I have two sets because this is technically the lining. So now I'm going to right, put right sides together so that the shoulder seams are aligning. I'm gonna pin where the shoulder seam is. And you are going to stitch these together. Let me turn it this way, it's a little bit easier. Your pattern has notches on them. So you're going to stitch these together in between those points. So in between this notch all the way over to this notch. Even though there are notches on the pattern, I would just double check to make sure, listen, we're not all perfect. Um, I would just double check that it, the notches match. So if you put your side front or side back up, you want basically want to stitch mark where that point is so that they're aligning at the bottom, mark that. And then I'm gonna put it up towards the front. I'm gonna mark that point as well. So I'm gonna sew a straight stitch along this edge and then along this edge as well. I'll, be, I'll mark, pin mark the same points on the opposite sides as well. Okay, I sewed it with a straight stitch, back stitch at beginning and end. I'm going to clip two, but not through, those little points where I end, ended my stitch and then I'm gonna flip everything to the right side and I am going to give it a nice press. Okay, so we press everything right side out, and where we clipped into the fabric, you can see I have this little hinge here. That will allow us to do the next step, which is attach the side front and the side back. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put, wait, I have the wrong side. right sides together and you're basically going to stitch right to that point where that fabric stitching was sticking out and then all the way down. Using a straight stitch, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end and then if you have a serger, you can serge it. If you don't, you can uh, press it to one side, leave the edges raw or you can um, press it to one side and stitch it down with a zigzag stitch. So you are gonna do this for both sides, so the right and the left, and then on the back as well. Okay, we are getting close to finishing. After this step, we just have to do the fold over elastic or finish the neckline and then do the bottom band 
and then we're done. So for one of them, I also searched the bottom edge of the sports bra. I will tell you why once we get to that step, but I'm sure some of you are like, wait a second, she didn't tell me to search the bottom edge. Why did she? Just wait. So I, before I uh, finish the neckline, I am going to do a little tack right here. And by bar tack, I mean a straight stitch back and forth three to four times, either up or downwards, just to hold the seam allowances facing this way. On this, on the, set, on the front left, front right, also on the back as well. Okay, now that I tacked it down at the front as well as the back, I'm gonna apply fold over elastic. You can also do rubber elastic along the neckline, same way that you did along the armhole. Now, since it's a circle, what you will do is when you go get to the beginning, you're gonna overlap, whether it's fold over elastic or rubber elastic, you overlap about a half of an inch. That's the way that you finish it off. Okay, so let's move on to the last step, which is uh, attaching the bottom band elastic to the bottom of the sports bralette. Now there are two applications. One is to attach an elastic band, um, and the other one is to create a casing. This is the casing, and then to put an elastic band inside. Um, two different applications. Really, this one is for, let's just say you don't have a band that matches, and you want the bottom to match the fabric of your sports bra. Um, so I went ahead uh, and I did, the, I did the initial steps for this step, because um, I think it's easier to show the after than the before. So also, um, in the previous video, I didn't cut out those elastic guides, and this is why. It's because when you get to this point, you may have sewn something a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. So I like to, um, ha once I have my bralette assembled, I like to make the casing. What I do is I basically take my elastic band and I hold it up and I measure out how wide it should be. And then to make the casing, it is basically two times the width plus seam allowance, which is about a half of an inch. So um, I put it inside. I have the seams aligned. I put it inside, I fold it in half. I pin it, and then I'll pin it all the way around. And I cut this way too wide. This is about an inch wide. I'll cut that off before I so it, but it should be about a quarter of an inch past the elastic band. I'd like it to be nice and tight. And then what I'll do, I'll cut off the excess that I, because I cut the casing too wide. But I will put a line the side seam with one side seam on the sports bralette. I'll pin it all the way around and then I'll sew it with a lightning stitch. So a lightning stitch gives you a little bit of flexibility but also the um, so that you can turn it back 
um, and it will have a nice clean finish. Now for the elastic band, really easy. Same thing as you hold the elastic band up, you um, determine the width of your elastic band. I made it, I sewed a straight stitch. I pressed the seams open and then did a little stitch right there to hold the seam allowances down. On the side that I didn't do the stitch, I will align it with the side seam and then I'll pin it all the way around, and then I'm gonna sew this one with a zigzag stitch. And you want that zigzag stitch to be right on the edge of the elastic. sewed the S9620 sports bralette from start to finish. Showed you two different applications, one with rubber elastic, one with fold over elastic, one with elastic band at the bottom, the other one with an encased bottom band. Um, I hope that this gives you the confidence to make the, S, the S9620 Two zero, um, another brain fart. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. You can always put in the comments any questions that you you may have, or you can email hello at madeline.com. Alrighty, I will see you in the next video, and we will make the biker short and the leggings.